the most usual weapon we've seen in quite some time, an egg. But don't let that scramble your feelings for the wild and crazy adventure known as Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg on the GameCube. The evil crows have imprisoned the chicken elders who, aside from no longer being free-range chickens, are forbidden from coaxing the sun out of its slumber. This leaves all of Morningland in total darkness. So a young boy named Billy Hatcher is given the legendary rooster suit to help. With its power, he can control the magical eggs, rescue the elders, and rid Morningland of the crows once and for all. If the bright and colorful graphics look familiar, that's because Billy Hatcher was developed by the creators of Sonic the Hedgehog. In fact, this is the first all-new platform game from the folks at Sonic Team since the glory days of the Sega Saturn system. And this title does look beautiful. They definitely chose a sunny palette when picking the game's colors. Your primary task is to collect magical eggs and use them to fight and solve puzzles through six unique stages like Fire Stage and Ice Stage. To make use of an egg, simply run up to it and Billy will automatically push it. Then you can use it to either roll over enemies or throw it at them. Each time you perform an action with the egg, it will grow. Eventually, with a cock-a-doodle-doo, the egg will hatch, releasing a magical beast that can help you. Controlling these eggs is a bit tricky. If you try to cut back and head in the opposite direction, Billy will let go of the egg. This can be frustrating, especially in times of a fierce fight. Also, lining the egg up to throw will often result in missed targets. Master these controls, though, and soon enough, you'll be ruling the roost. Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg is a unique, though limited title that could have benefited from more variation. Fortunately, the multiplayer mode more than makes up for these shortcomings. So if you're looking for a lighthearted adventure on the GameCube, don't worry, this one's all it's cracked up to be. If you've been playing SimCity 4 on the PC, you no doubt realize that money helps. Luckily, the bank of Cybernet is always open, so grab a pen and jot down this rewarding cheat. Press Control and X to bring up the cheat entry box and type in weakness pays as one word. That's W E A K N E S S P A Y and S. Consider this your lucky day because we've just given you an extra thousand dollars in your treasury. That's right, use this money to buy anything you need. Compliments of, well, you know where. The professors of Peculiar are back. This time, however, these weird friends have left the Xbox for the Game Boy Advance. But while the console it's played on may be smaller, their adventure has never been so big. This is Oddworld Munch's Odyssey. Munch, the Gabbit, and his sidekick Abe are leading an offbeat revolution to save the world. With their sacred land in jeopardy of being destroyed by the greedy Gluckens, the strange pair team up to teach those rascals a lesson. You'll be in command of your enemies using the power of chant. Of course, there are also plenty of wacky weapons and power-ups to use along the way. Fortunately, no matter what method you use to take out your opponents, the controls are responsive and accurate. Some of the objectives and puzzles are slightly unclear, but we think Oddworld, though admittedly, um, odd, is a fun place to visit. We now move from abnormally ugly looking characters to an abnormally beautiful one. Everyone's favorite blonde who has everything, Barbie, is back on the GBA. And this time she's traded in her pink Corvette for a horse adventure in Blue Ribbon Race. It's the National Grand Horse Charity and you're invited. 
It's time to saddle up and go on an amazing cross-country race to the finish line. You'll ride through lush countryside and compete in exciting events using skill and speed to dodge obstacles like rocks, hay bales, and even forest animals. One of this game's strongest attributes is the fantastic horse animations. These beautiful beasts gallop, run, and jump with solid fluidity. Sadly, controlling them leaves a bit to be desired. This can be extremely frustrating, especially for the young girls wanting to take this one for a ride. Blue Ribbon Race suffers from the same faults that some critics direct at Barbie herself. All style and no substance. This one just doesn't gallop away with our hearts. There's nothing like the thrill of racing an ATV. Being able to not only navigate, but skillfully maneuver around rugged terrain is a feat not for the weak of heart. Hold on tight and get ready for the awesome power of ATV Off-Road Fury 2 for the PS2, our game of the week. The second installment in this series actually has a lot in common with its previous release. It combines arcade play with some Tony Hawk style big air stunts. Of course, all of this has been amplified from the last title, resulting in an over-the-top game promising to fill the need of extreme enthusiasts. But does it succeed? You'll customize your rider's apparel, then choose from over 20 authentic all-terrain vehicles. That said, it's time to take it to the road, or the off-road. The four modes include the standard nationals and supercross races, which require you to compete against opponents on either indoor or outdoor tracks. And then there's a freestyle mode to let you perform wild and crazy stunts. The real fun, however, is in the enduro mode. Here you'll race across a vast and rugged terrain, cutting your own path to the next checkpoint. This free roaming aspect adds a great deal of challenging replayability. A huge portion of the game is experienced by pulling off tricks. When you see that the preload meter is filled, press the correct button and you can grab some big air. We could have used a few more tricks on offer, but this is still a good addition. If you think you have what it takes to compete with real life opponents, there's a multiplayer option which lets you take on up to three buddies. And if there's no one else around, you can go online and race your virtual friends. Overall, ATV Off-Road Fury 2 is an entertaining title. While we would have liked more attention paid to the trick portions, there's no denying the white-knuckle excitement these four-wheeled monsters of the dirt provide. We look forward to the next installment of this up-and-coming franchise, checking in as our Game of the Week. The latest season of the National Hockey League is in full swing, which can only mean one thing. Another edition of NHL 2004 is here. So let's skate our way to victory on the PC and all three consoles. This series consistently receives high marks for excellence, and this title continues that winning tradition. The gameplay is as sharp as ever, highlighted by realistic player animations, authentic arenas, and tight controls. Plus, as usual, league information is updated so you can recreate last season's Stanley Cup Finals between the Anaheim Mighty Ducks and the New Jersey Devils. Although the game engine remains basically the same as last year, there are several upgrades. The control system now includes a two-button passing option to help you get the puck to a teammate. And if someone's in your way, you can use a saucer pass to lift the puck off the ice. Subtle techniques like these will often allow you to get a better shot on goal. And you can now check players whenever you want just by using the right analog stick. When on defense, simply skate up to the player you wish to check and then tap the stick in his direction. Time it right and you can crush him into the boards. Of course, this tends to lead to fights, so be prepared for a right hook. There are a multitude of game modes to explore. You can jump right into the action in the Play Now mode or build a franchise in Dynasty mode. 
This incredibly deep option allows you to assume the dual role of both coach and general manager, where you'll trade for the best players and lead your team to glory. NHL 2004 from Electronic Arts is an awesome hockey sim that's rivaled only by Sega's ESPN NHL Hockey 2K4. So let's get that puck into the net. He shoots, he scores! If you've been playing the cool expansion to Warcraft 3 on the PC, you know that this frozen throne can be tough to beat, especially if you can't see what's coming after you. Luckily, Cybernet is here to shed some light on this game, so grab a pen and jot down this cheat. Press enter during gameplay to display the message box. Then type in, I see dead people as one word. That's I, S, E, E, D, E, A, D, P, E, O, P, L, and E. Now you're able to see the full map. That's right, no one will be able to launch a sneak attack on you. So enjoy and remember to keep watching Cybernet for more awesome tactics. Coming up, we take our fight to the streets, go on a fantastical saga, and explore the world of portable gaming. Derek's got a lot to say. See you later. Woman, too emotional. So what happens when his wife is replaced by her mother for a week? They've given me headaches. Derek! They've given me toothache. That's mad! And they've given me verrucas. What? Look, she lost to you, so I'm with it. Take my mother-in-law Tuesday, 9.45, ITV1. Oh. I'm really sorry, Miss Dean. No, it's OK. It's fine. Don't worry. I, I didn't know it was Donny Osmond. Here, but where's my dressing room, then? <laughs> this must be the one. Better be the one. All the stars under one roof. The Royal Variety Performance 2003. Wednesday at 9, ITV1. There must be room for one more. Welcome back to part two of Cybernet. We begin the second half with a call to arms. An enemy army has taken over New York City, and the Big Apple has become a police state. However, there are a brave few who refuse to live in tyranny. This is no time to back down, so let's join the revolution with the Freedom Fighters on the PC and all three consoles. This game takes an alternative timeline approach to history. It's set in a world where the Cold War is still raging and liberty is on the losing side. You play as a plumber named Chris Stone. While fixing a customer's sink, he finds out the owner is a heroic leader who's taking on the evil conquering army. He suddenly finds himself joining the battle, fighting for freedom, and ultimately becoming a leader himself. <laughs> Freedom Fighters is a squad-based third-person shooter, meaning most of the time you won't be in the battle alone. As you gain more combat experience, you'll be able to recruit fellow soldiers to the cause. You can command your soldiers to rush, protect, or retreat with a remarkably easy-to-use interface system. This immediately sets it apart from other, more complex tactical shooters. A map screen will give you several resistance targets that you'll need to take out. While you choose the order of these missions, some will have you acquire a weapon or tool from a previous level. This throws some strategy into the mix. There is a multiplayer mode that allows for up to four players to battle it out in a King of the Hill type game. But sadly, it's little more than an afterthought next to the compelling single player experience. We would have much preferred it if the developers spent the time working on more missions. In fact, our only complaint is that the game's too short. Oh. 
Freedom Fighters is an old-fashioned, adrenalized action shooter at heart. The story unfolds like a big-budget adventure film with enough ammo dispensing and pyrotechnics to make even Arnold Schwarzenegger blush. With its engrossing premise and smart gameplay, we have the feeling this is an explosive franchise in the making. We just can't get enough of that high-flying, motorcycle-riding craziness of freestyle Metal X on the PS2. But although we cover a lot of ground in this game, we still haven't gone everywhere until now. Grab a pen and jot down this cheat. At the code screen, type in universe. That's U N I V E R S and E. Consider this code an all access pass because you've just unlocked all the levels and all the events. That's right, go anywhere that these bikes and your skills can take you. Enjoy. Hang on tight, it's time for Cybernet's Top 10 GameCube Chart. At number 10, our favorite animated clay characters come to video game life in Wallace and Gromit Project Zoo. The Cold War just got a whole lot hotter. It's time to battle to safeguard sovereignty in Freedom Fighters at 9. At 8, speeding its way back to our game playing roots, the world's fastest hedgehog is ahead of the pack in Sonic Mega Collection. He may be short, fat, and mean, but he's the only one who can save the planet. It's Wario World spinning into the 7th position. We love this blue guy so much, he's made it onto our list twice, this time in the sixth spot with Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut. At five, Link continues to battle the bad guys as he fights his way through the Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Swimming past the competition and avoiding sharks along the way, it's the little clownfish from Finding Nemo at four. Next time you play Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2004 at 3, remember the old saying, drive for show, putt for dough. The world's most gregarious grapplers are ready to take center stage in WWE WrestleMania 19, body slamming to number 2. But none compare to the sword swinging action of Link and the other fighters from Soul Calibur 2, our GameCube number 1. While everyone loves playing games from the comfort of their home, sometimes we just don't have that luxury. Fortunately, taking our favorite pastime on the road is easier and more enjoyable than ever thanks to a multitude of fantastic high-tech devices. The mobile gaming revolution is here, so join Team Cybernet for an inside look. Once dismissed as an inconsequential segment of the video game industry, Portable gaming is now a huge part of the business. And without a doubt, the dominant handheld system is Nintendo's Game Boy Advance. It's currently the world's fastest selling game machine and for good reason. It's powered by a 32-bit processor, so games look as good as those first seen on the Super Nintendo console. Plus, the variety of games available for the GBA is astonishing. They include classic Nintendo favorites like The Legend of Zelda, blockbuster crossover hits like Harry Potter, and established franchises like Castlevania. Although wildly successful, the GBA did receive a few complaints from older gamers, so Nintendo created something a bit more stylish, and the result was the Game Boy Advance SP. Released earlier this year, the GBA SP features a sleek folding design and incorporates two major improvements, a built-in backlit screen and a rechargeable lithium-ion battery. Mostly, however, it just looks much cooler. For many players, the easiest way to game on the go is by simply turning on their mobile phone. Nearly all handsets include at least a few basic titles like Space Invaders or Tetris. However, publishers are also now releasing a vast assortment of surprisingly high-quality titles to entice hardcore gamers. 
These encompass all the best known genres such as racing, sports, and action. And what's great is that many of these titles can be played over wireless networks. Plus, handset makers like Samsung, Sony Ericsson, and Toshiba are now designing technologically advanced phones to showcase these new games. Some phone models can even slide into a plastic shell to simulate a console control pad. In the boldest statement yet that wireless gaming is on the verge of becoming the next big thing, mobile phone giant Nokia recently released a game deck called the N-Gage. This innovative device is jam-packed with all kinds of electronic wizardry. Naturally, it's a phone, but it's also an MP3 digital music player, a stereo FM radio, and it allows you to surf the mobile internet. And of course, it plays games which come on these tiny cards. Most importantly, many major publishers like Activision, Eidos, Sega, and THQ are already developing titles for the system. As for specifications, the vertically oriented screen displays nearly PS1 quality 3D graphics with up to 4,000 colors. And you play using an eight-way directional controller along with a beveled keypad. At Nokia's E3 press conference in Los Angeles, they promoted their new gadget surrounded by a great deal of fanfare. They gave a multitude of demonstrations of various titles and also showed off wireless gameplay via Bluetooth technology. Even famed developer John Romero made an appearance to show his support. The N-Gage was released worldwide on October 7th amidst a tremendous publicity blitz. It's apparent that Nokia wants to be at the forefront of any time and any place gaming. Engage is really unlike any other product. It has no competitors. It's a totally new system, and it's really going to take gaming to the next level. This is the first of a new generation we're going to see in wireless multiplayer online gaming. Keep it tuned to Cybernet, and we'll let you know if the Engage lives up to the hype. For now, though, some gamers just can't wait to get their hands on it. I'm just so excited I can't even finish this interview. I want to go play it. While fads come and go, RPG games continue to be a constant source of adventure for gamers. Final Fantasy has had countless sequels, and fans are already looking forward to the next Zelda quest. So it should come as no surprise that the makers of the Saga titles decided to create another installment to their popular series. This is Unlimited Saga for the PlayStation 2. The Seven Wonders is a group of structures shrouded in mystery. Legends say long absent gods lie within them and their release will trigger a rebirth of the Golden Age. The story is uniquely told through the eyes of seven different protagonists. Each one has their own motivations for seeking the wonders. However, they all quickly learn that an evil army is in pursuit with the intention of robbing the gods power for themselves. You'll choose from a wide cast of characters. Each one has their own special ability to add to the overall strength of the group. The game also boasts a free scenario system that allows for non-linear gameplay. So as the storyline progresses, your characters and the world they inhabit constantly evolves. While the game obviously tries to be innovative, it sadly becomes bogged down by its own efforts. For instance, the combat system resembles a slot machine where your action is determined by chance. The result is a chaotic and clunky distraction to the overall experience. However, the title's biggest problem is that it's just plain boring. The gameplay is monotonous, the graphics are dated, and despite some admittedly original touches, it fails to be anything more than an outdated effort. There are numerous RPGs of higher quality to choose from, and sadly, Unlimited Saga gets stomped by the much stronger competition. Even the most die-hard adventurer is better off skipping this title. It looks like this week's Cybernet Saga has come to an end, but we promise to be back soon with more fantastic games and features from around the world. And don't forget to keep in touch via email. It's Dominic Diamond in Games Master.
You may be wondering why I'm playing with my organ in a crowded church. Well, this is Games Master, television's only video game magazine show. Coming to you from the only church in the country where Harry Seacombe is too fat to fit through the door. But we'll begin tonight with our initial game playing challenge, and to detail it, I hand you over to the celestial godfather, the Games Master. Hello. How kind of you to join me once again. I have to admit to being rather pleased with the three little challenges I have managed to concoct for you this week. To tee us off, we take to the fairways and putty greens of top players golf. If you wish to complete my challenge successfully, you will need to play the first three holes of the country club course in level par. Best of luck. 